Are people who are passionate about head covering majoring in the minors? And is a movement dedicated to restoring this symbol a distraction from more important things? This is a common charge, and here's a clip of one pastor who has said this publicly. There, there are so many trends, there are so many movements that people look at and say, oh, this is great, I gotta jump on this. I, I saw this the other day, and I, I just about fell out of my seat. It, it was on, a, it was on an advertisement on a blog encouraging ladies to join a head covering movement. I looked at that and I thought, that is so Corinthian. I mean, that's, that's all it is. It is so Corinthian because it is the very idea of getting sidetracked on something, in that case, that was cultural, getting sidetracked on something instead of focusing on the gospel of Christ. That's baby stuff. Brothers and sisters, if we get hold of something and it sidetracks us from focusing on the gospel, then we're dealing with trinkets that belong to babies, not for those that are mature. Today I'd like to tackle this objection to show that one can passionately embrace this symbol without majoring in the minors and being a distraction from the gospel. When one is majoring in the minors, they take something of a low importance and they elevate it to an importance level that it just doesn't have. And so some people are concerned that if people are talking about, teaching, and exhorting others regarding head covering, that it's doing just that. Let me propose to you how we should look at this instead. Here's what the Apostle Paul says. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. He says all scripture is profitable, not some and not just things that are mentioned many times, but all of it. Not only that, but all scripture is profitable for teaching. This means that discussion and teaching on head covering is not a distraction, but it's a proper response to belief in the inspiration of scripture. Furthermore, while it is possible to take any issue and give it too much importance, we shouldn't jump to that conclusion just because we see organization, focus on an issue, or an exhaustive study. See, all of those things can be done in a gospel-centered way while keeping Jesus the main thing. In fact, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So the practice of head covering is a demonstration of love towards Christ. This is a beautiful thing. We can't take the commands of Christ and say that they distract us from Christ. No, if God says something, and all of scripture is God saying something, then it's proper for us to study it like a workman, teach on it, and then exhort others to follow what God says. I mean, some people say, you know, forget all that head covering stuff and just share the gospel. Well, no, I'm not going to forget what God says about something. If it wasn't important to God, he wouldn't have said anything, let alone give us such a lengthy defense like he makes about head covering. And one doesn't have to stop serving to study and practice this biblical teaching. That's a false dichotomy. It's not head covering or sharing the gospel. Why not practice head covering and share the gospel? So look, I agree that head covering is not the most important thing out there. It is a lesser command. But I want you to see from scripture how Jesus deals with these lesser commands. Let's look together. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Jesus tells the Pharisees that tithing is not as important as justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You see, the Pharisees got the small stuff right, but they neglected the more important commands. So, how did Jesus respond? He does sharply rebuke them and tells them to start doing the weightier matters of the law. However, he doesn't tell them to stop doing the less important commands. He wants them to do both. He said, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. In another instance when speaking about Old Testament laws, Jesus says, 
Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. As we can see, Jesus didn't view lesser commands as optional. The least are to be observed along with the greatest. They need to be distinguished from one another and kept in their proper places, but both are to be observed. And that's what we're trying to do. We're taking a minor doctrine, but giving it a very thorough study. We believe this focus is warranted because this passage of scripture dealing with head covering is so badly neglected. It carries so much baggage and there are views out there like the cultural view, which undermine really important doctrines like complementarianism, for example. So a focused, in-depth study and then calling people to embrace what God says based on the conclusion of the study is not majoring in the minors, that's just Bible study and teaching. Now, the pastor at the beginning of this video actually models what we're trying to do. See, he wrote an entire book about one issue, biblical eldership. Biblical eldership is a lot like head covering because it's not the most important thing in scripture but it still is important because God says something about it. The subtitle of the book that he wrote is Rediscovering the Biblical Model for Church Leadership. So, he wants people to be persuaded and then to rediscover what God says about how church leadership should function. Now, look, I haven't read his book, but I'm pretty sure that he doesn't sidetrack people from the gospel just because he chose to focus on one of the lesser issues and is calling people to embrace that view. He wants to see churches change after reading his book, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. And so, if he can write an entire book about one issue, the pastoral office, without majoring in the minors and distracting people from the gospel, then surely it can be done for a head covering too. There's men like Ken Ham who have spent their entire life on one issue, which in his case is biblical creation. But he does so without distracting people from the gospel. And there's great movements like the pro-life movement, which organizes like-minded people to help save lives. Those aren't trinkets and distractions, those are good things. We just need to make sure that in whatever we do, that we keep the gospel as the main thing.